On the 6th of June 1944, history was made as the Normandy invasions began. D-Day, as it was known, was the start of the end for the Germans against the Allies, as following the invasion they would be pushed back. It was history being made in front of them, but the heroic actions of the soldiers that fought on the beaches and fought to get off them were not without some war crime. Some German soldiers, who should have been taken as prisoners of war, were shot dead by the Allies, as they were not in the business of taking prisoners alive. They were there to establish a foothold in Europe at whatever cost. But in the days that followed, there were many war crimes committed against Canadian and Allied soldiers that resulted in the executions of dozens of people. These executions became known as the Normandy Massacres, and they were carried out by the SS. But what is the story of them? Join us today as we look at the executions of the soldiers of D-Day shot by the SS. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The 3rd Canadian Division landed around 7.45am on Juno Beach. They were met by fierce fighting by the German 716th Division. Hours later, Juno was secured, but the Canadian forces incurred many casualties. They had in a day managed to advance 7 kilometres, but the 12th SS Panzer Division was one of the German armoured divisions based close to the beachheads that were landed upon. The division would later be ordered to fight hours after the landing, as Hitler had taken sleeping pills and had been in such a deep sleep that he would not be awoken. It was Hitler who would give the order to attack, and the Nazis and the military had to wait for his go-ahead. But then they tried to push the Allies back. At the front were Hitler Youth Units, and the 25th Panzer Grenadier Regiment, led by Colonel Kurtz Meyer. He was a fanatical Nazi, and had been involved in many war crimes on the Eastern Front, that resulted in the slaughter of civilians. The fighting continued, and the Canadians managed to blow up many German tanks, but they did encounter heavy losses. Some were captured and fell into the hands of the Germans, but a number were executed. The 3rd Battalion of the 12th SS Panzer Division, led by Lieutenant Colonel Karl Heinz Milius, were involved in some of these war crimes. The SS soldiers were furious with the casualties they sustained whilst taking a village, and they would lash out on their captured prisoners. One of the first victims of the Normandy massacre was Private Lorne Brown, who refused to retreat and leave a wounded man behind. He was then pinned to the ground by a German soldier, who then bayoneted him a number of times. One Canadian also walked towards the Germans with his arms raised to surrender, but he was then shot dead. Following this, a German soldier then shot another private, and smashed his head in with a rifle butt before shooting him. Villagers were ordered to bury the bodies and the remains. Eight Canadians were also ordered into the middle of a road when they were then shot, the remains of one man was left in the road, and traffic ran over it. The 3rd Battalion incurred more casualties, as Private John Metcalf was killed whilst being searched, and a German shot four times into his abdomen, before shooting three times more in the head, and then emptying his magazine into his body. Further atrocities and executions continued, until a major appealed to the SS to stop. However, this did not last long, as more prisoners of war were executed. The last man of the 3rd Battalion executed in the crimes was an army chaplain who walked towards an SS patrol, but his remains were found weeks later and he had been stabbed through the heart with a bayonet. Canadian prisoners of war continued to be sent towards the courtyard of the Ardennes Abbey, where Meyer had based his headquarters. But following being searched, these men were told to put their hands down and they were then told to walk into the courtyard of the Abbey. Around 30 minutes later, the German police officers approached the Canadians and asked for volunteers, but not one single soldier stepped forward. The Germans then interrogated the prisoners one by one, before then executing them. The first six were bludgeoned to death, and the last four were shot in their heads. The following day, seven more prisoners of war were executed, and there was absolutely no remorse at all. Prisoners one by one were walked into the garden of the courtyard, where they were then shot dead. After the Battle of Poir et Bessin, more executions took place. 24 Canadian and two British POWs were brought to a chateau where the German battalion had set up their headquarters. SS Major Gerhard Bremer interrogated the prisoners 
and following this they were marched single file with their hands raised into the firing range where they were then shot. One of the prisoners shot was a medic and some were forced to lie on their stomachs when a German executioner or a soldier stood above them with their rifles and weapons primed. Some prisoners who had been captured and were held in a stable were initially treated well but then they were escorted to the headquarters of Lieutenant Colonel Monker. Monker's orders of not to send back many prisoners was taken by a subordinate of ordering execution. The prisoners were then intercepted by an SS staff car and the prisoners were forced to walk close to a road where they were then ordered to stand still. The Germans then proclaimed, Now you die! And the soldiers opened fire on their prisoners. Only five of the forty managed to escape and at least four died whilst trying to flee. This individual episode was the worst single war crime committed against Canadians in their whole military history. Other murders and executions took place as three soldiers were cut off behind German lines and to begin with these were kept under good conditions and were allowed food, water, medical aid and somewhere to sleep. But then a German officer at gunpoint was ordered by a superior officer to kill the prisoners and his three SS men then shot the Canadians. Other men were shot in the same way inside of a bomb crater. There were many more additional massacres that took place in Normandy and many bodies of victims have not yet been found. One Polish man who was conscripted into the Wehrmacht stated how he saw 15 SS soldiers guarding seven Canadians who were then subsequently shot by machine gun. Another incident took place near Caen and one German soldier stated his company shot willingly 15 to 20 POWs but still to this day no bodies have been found. So following the Normandy landings there were scores of executions and atrocities with the Canadian prisoners of war being treated savagely by the German soldiers. Hitler would throughout his time as a dictator issue a number of illegal orders in which he ordered enemy commandos to be shot on sight. But in the aftermath of D-Day, the SS would slaughter and rampage whenever they could, and they would decide to execute their prisoners of war. Many of the generals who were in command would give these orders to execute, and some have been considered skilled commanders on the battlefield and are revered today, for their hands were not clean. The executions of the soldiers of D-Day were barbaric, they were a war crime that deserves to be remembered. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.